I will say this. If anything, the final moments of that press conference now allows WWE to build to a possible triple threat match for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at WrestleMania where Roman Reigns, the Tribal Chief, defends against the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes and against the Great One, The Rock. The Rock, who by the way, pretty much confirmed he's turned heel. He had some heelish tendencies at yesterday's press conference. Number two, Roman Reigns and The Rock side by side. It's it's not that it's strange. It's it, it can't be strange. They're cousins. They're family. They're blood. So it's not that it doesn't make sense because they're supposed to feud with each other. It does make absolutely so much sense. Because much like Roman Reigns spoke badly on Dusty Rhodes... Cody did the same to their family, which brings them together. And again, there are a lot of fans on social media talking about a brand new two-man power trip in Roman Reigns and The Rock. And I would not be opposed to that. But it won't be as good as back in 01 with Stone Cold and Triple H because Roman Reigns and The Rock, they're not, they're not full-time performers and they shouldn't be full-time performers. Once they come back every single week. Once we get The Rock, especially The Rock, every single week, it's going to get tiring. People, the pops are going to go more and more down. They're going to get lower. And that's not what WWE wants. But yesterday's press conference, if anything, left us with more questions than answers. And that's exactly where WWE wants us to be. <clears throat> they want us to not know exactly what's going on. To not know exactly what the main event of WrestleMania is going to be. Because Rock versus Reigns, that might still happen. Triple H announced it. Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. It's quote-unquote official. But stranger things have happened. Things have changed. And I'm not saying the same thing will happen. Because in 2014, it was official. Randy Orton versus Batista for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship back then. And Daniel Bryan was inserted into that match. So again, a lot of things can happen. A lot of people are talking about The Rock and Roman Reigns in a tag match versus Cody Rhodes and World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins for night one of WrestleMania. And then WrestleMania Night 2, we get Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, where Cody Rhodes finishes his story. There's also a matter of the, the slight, the, the smallest possibility of having Roman Reigns work both nights at WrestleMania. Night 1, Rock versus Reigns. Night 2, Cody versus Reigns. And again, that's a little bit uh, illogical to me because out of both matches, the bigger main event, and there's no doubt about that. Nobody can refute this. This is, to me at least, and to a lot of people out there, a lot of you fans, if you don't, if you don't look at this from an emotional standpoint, the bigger box office main event is definitely The Rock versus Roman Reigns. So what WWE is doing right now with this entire story that they're trying to tell is to have is to get you more emotionally invested in Cody Rhodes by inserting The Rock, the great one, one of the most popular superstars of all time, the self-proclaimed people's champion. And make no mistake about it, he is still the people's champion. But WWE knows that fans, the, 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 excuse me, the WWE universe, they hate it. When people cut the line, when people have privileges. And The Rock is exerting his power as part of the board. As Dwayne Johnson. They don't like that. Especially since in storyline, Cody Rhodes earned his shot 
at Roman Reigns by winning back-to-back Royal Rumble matches. So again, Triple H may have announced Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes for the undisputed Universal Championship at WrestleMania, but we're still two months out, two plus months out from the show of shows. A lot of things can happen. A lot of things can happen. A lot of things can go wrong. A lot of things can go right. Everything can change, and that is exactly where WWE wants you to be as a viewer, as an audience member. Because guess what? That means you're tuning in tonight to Friday Night SmackDown to see what the hell is going on. That means you're tuning in next Monday night on Raw to see what else transpires. And depending on what happens tonight and on Monday, you'll tune in for next Friday and the following Monday and so on and so forth leading into WrestleMania 40. And that is exactly what WWE wants. It is a business after all. It is a TV show after all. They want to get you emotionally invested. As far, as far as Rock versus Cody Rhodes is, well, the Rock slapped Cody Rhodes right in the mouth, right in the face, in front of the entire, the entire world pretty much was watching it. (laughs) That opens up the possibilities for a triple threat match. That finally inserts Cody Rhodes into Rock versus Reigns in a way that doesn't feel forced, in a way that doesn't feel fabricated, even though it is because it's all scripted, of course. But now, Cody and Rock have just enough, has just as much of a reason to go after each other as the next guy because they've gotten physical with each other. And one last thing that I will say about this. One very last thing. And again, I can't give you answers because, again, like I said, this press conference has left us with a lot more questions than answers. As simple as that. The main event is quote-unquote set, but we thought it was set last Friday on SmackDown when The Rock returned. And that wasn't the case. So a lot of things can change. But one thing I want to make very, very clear about one of the biggest problems with not just the wrestling fan base, but most fan bases that are just so invested in the product. This entire idea of a certain superstar, a certain program, a certain championship, a certain character, whatever you want to call it, being the clear number two. Here's the thing about the world, ladies and gentlemen. There's always a number one, and there's always a number two. You can't deny that. And here's the thing. Here's the hypocrisy about this entire issue. You don't like Roman Reigns being a part-timer. You don't like him being the face of the company. You don't like him being Universal Champion for three-plus years and showing up whenever he gives a damn. Much like he said on SmackDown, He shows up every once in a while and he gets paid 10 times more than everybody else. That's just a business. And you don't like that. And in spite of all of that, you, as a wrestling fan, you who hatred towards Roman Reigns and the situation with the part-timers and The Rock coming back, you acknowledge, you know Understand that Roman Reigns, the Undisputed Universal Championship, doesn't matter how many times they have Seth freaking Rollins defend that World Heavyweight Championship, doesn't matter how many times he calls himself the workhorse, doesn't matter how many weeks we actually see Seth Rollins on Monday Night Raw and at every pay-per-view, it does not matter. You, as a pro wrestling fan, know that the number one guy, that the number one title that the most important championship is Roman Reigns' universal title. See my hypocrisy? See the, excuse me, see the hypocrisy in there? And yet you bitch and you moan about Seth Rollins being out there with all these main event superstars, still being a part of the biggest story in years. 
But you still admit that Roman Reigns is the guy. That championship is the title. As simple as that. And you can't take it for what it is. The World Heavyweight Championship is a world title. It has less lineage than the Universal title. Which is, in my opinion, the WWE title. Because they, they kind of fuse them together. But, that's happened multiple times in the past. As simple as that. So with that said, those are my thoughts. Are we still getting Rock versus Reigns at WrestleMania? I don't know. I'd be surprised if we don't. I'd be even more surprised if it's a triple threat match. I don't think it should be a triple threat match. But they've certainly opened the door for it to be a triple threat match at WrestleMania. Rock getting booed last night. Cody Rhodes not getting the biggest pop last night. Hell, there were We Want Cody, Cody Sucks chants, much like with John Cena. And again, that to me is an anomaly. Because the most vocal fan base, the most vocal is always the minority. The IWC. The people who actually attended this press conference are mostly IWC and members of the media who live and die by this product, apparently. And they're going to voice their concern. They're going to try and boycott shows or whatever. They're going to hijack shows or whatever. That's what they do. That's what they do. So again, we're left with more questions than answers out of this press conference. And I will say this. There is no other company in the in the world, in sports entertainment, that can do this. That can have a press conference that's not an actual press conference. It's actually a TV show. It's actually a big stage for promos. And have us more interested in a show of shows than ever before. No one else can do it. Not TNA Wrestling, not AEW, not WCW back in the day. Hell, not even WWF back in the day. That's why, WWE, that's why WWE is the leader in sports entertainment. They are the leader in spectacles. And WrestleMania is right around the corner. But we've got a hell of a long road ahead of us. And it's going to be a damn good one. So with that said, what are your thoughts? What did you think of last night's, yesterday's press conference in Las Vegas, Nevada? Were you left with more questions? Do you have answers? Whoa. What are you expecting to come out of this? Leave your thoughts, comments, and predictions in the comments section below. So with that said, my name is Alexis Carrillo. This has been Wrestling Talk, and I'll see you next time.